Hello everyone, in this mathematics and statistics tutorial we explain how to approximate expectations and integrals of functions by using the Monte Carlo method. The Monte Carlo method is used in a number of applications such as simulations of random processes, state estimation of dynamical systems, machine learning, etc. For us, the most interesting application is state estimation on dynamical systems by using particle filters. Namely, the Monte Carlo method is the basis for the important sampling method that serves as the basis of particle filters. We will cover the important sampling method and particle filters in our future tutorials. In this tutorial, we explain the basics of the Monte Carlo method. We also illustrate theoretical concepts by using Python examples. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 500 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Here is a brief outline of this video tutorial. First, we will learn how to use the Monte Carlo method to approximate expectations of linear functions of random variables. That is, we will learn how to approximate integrals having this form. Over here, f of x is a probability density function of a random variable x. Then, we will consider more complex cases. That is, we will learn how to approximate the integrals having this form. In this integral, g of x is a nonlinear function and f of x is the probability density function of the random variable x. This integral can be seen as the expectation of a nonlinear function g of a random variable x. And finally, we will learn how to use the Monte Carlo method to approximate integrals of deterministic variables, that is, the integrals having this standard form. At the same time, we will explain Python codes. Okay, let's start with explanations. To illustrate the main ideas, we will first consider a simple example. Let us say that we want to compute an expectation of a random scalar variable capital X with a probability density function f of x defined on the interval x from a to b, where a and b can also be plus or minus infinity. That is, we want to compute this integral. Over here, e is the mathematical notation for the expectation operator. Let us now assume that the function f of x is such that this integral is difficult to exactly compute. That is, let's assume that this function has a very complex form and this form prevents us from analytically computing this integral. In a more general case, when x is a random vector, this problem becomes even more difficult. However, for simplicity, I will not cover the multidimensional case in this video tutorial. Here is the main problem that we want to solve. Knowing the mathematical form of the probability density function f of x, approximately compute this expectation. The Monte Carlo method solves this problem in this way. First, we draw n random samples from the distribution described by f of x. Let these samples be denoted by x1, x2, x3 until xn. Then, in the second step, we approximate this expectation operator and this integral by the average of these numbers. That is, we simply take these samples, we add them together, that is, we compute this sum, and we divide them by the number of samples n. Over here, e hat n is an approximation of this expectation operator, computed by using n samples of x. The subscript n in this notation denotes the fact that the approximation is computed by using n randomly drawn samples. The hat notation is usually used to denote an approximation or an estimate. 
This equation is called the Monte Carlo estimator of the expectation. From the law of large numbers, it follows that this estimator is a consistent estimator of expectation. Also, this estimator is unbiased. This means that, number one, as n approaches infinity, that is, when the number of random samples approaches infinity, this average over here approaches the exact value of the expectation given by this equation. Then, number two, for finite values of n, if we draw n samples a large number of times, and if we compute the average given by this equation for every set of n samples, and if we compute an average of all the averages, then this average will approximately be equal to the true value of the expectation given by this equation. And this is very important. Mathematically, this means that the expectation of this estimator is actually equal to the expectation of x. And here, you should stop and think for a second. Keep in mind the following. It should be kept in mind that every time we draw n random samples of x and we compute the average, given by this equation, the average will have a different value. This is because every set of n samples will have different elements for different experiments of randomly selecting n samples. So keep in mind that, that this variable over here, en hat, is actually a random number. That is, if you draw n samples, x1, x2, x3, and xn, and if you compute this average, you will obtain one value. If you repeat that experiment, that is, if you again draw n samples, you will get a different value. Now, if you take an average of all of these averages, you will actually obtain in the expectation, the expectation of x. And this is very important. Now, before we generalize the Monte Carlo method to more complex functions and examples, let us now test this important method. We will create a normal distribution in Python with a given mean and standard deviation. Then we will use the Monte Carlo method and this equation to approximate the mean of the normal distribution. Since we know the exact normal distribution, we will be able to actually compare this equation with the exact mean and we will be able to quantify the accuracy of this approximation and to illustrate the complete computation procedure. So let's do that. Here is the Python script that performs this task. The first step is to import the necessary libraries. First we need to import the NumPy library. Then from SciPy we need to import stats. Stats is a SciPy module for statistics. And finally we import the plotting function. Next let's define a normal distribution in Python. A normal distribution is defined by the mean value given over here and by standard deviation. Here's the standard deviation. Next, let's create a normal distribution. The create, to create a normal distribution, we use the function stats.norm. We specify as an input argument of this function the mean value and the standard deviation. Next, let's plot and visualize our probability density function. To do that, we use this function ppf. The ppf will return the x value corresponding to certain percentile. Over here, we get the x value corresponding to 1 percentile and the x value corresponding to 99 percentile. Okay, now since we have the start point and end point of our distribution, we create a numpy array that starts from the start point, ends at the end point, and in between we have 500 data points. Now, over here, we compute the values of our probability density function for this NumPy array. And finally, over here, we plot the probability density function. Here's how we do that. Okay, let's now execute this code. Here it is. Here is our normal distribution. We can see that the mean is at 15 
and the standard deviation is equal to 5, that is, the variance is 25. Our goal is to use the Monte Carlo method to approximate this integral, that is, we want to compute the expectation of a normal distribution. How do we do that? Well, the first step is to draw n independent samples, and the second step is to compute the average of these samples. Let's do that. To draw the samples, we use the function RVS. We specify the size. In my case, the size is equal to 10, and this is n, actually, in my presentation. So let's see the samples. Here they are. It's a NumPy array with 10 samples drawn from a normal distribution. Okay, and the second step, the final step, is to compute the average. Okay, so here is the average. The average is equal to 14.62. Okay, not bad. And if you go back, you can see that mean value is 15. Now, if I, if I repeat this experiment, once more, we will get another value for our mean. And you will see it over here. 12.68. Okay, again, if you do that, you repeat the complete process, you will get another value, etc. This means that this average is actually a random variable. Okay, let's see now what happens if we increase the sample size. For example, sample is equal to 20. We draw the samples and we compute the mean. And here's our average. Again, 14.22. And if you see again, we will obtain 16.27. Let's now increase the number of samples to 40. Repeat the complete procedure. And let's look into the average. 13.91. 13.91, let me just repeat again. Now, as we increase the number of samples, the variance of this estimator should actually decrease. So to illustrate that, let's now select, for example, 1,000 samples. And let's repeat the procedure. And let's see what will happen. And here's our average, very close to 15. If we now repeat again, we will get the number that's very close to 15. This means that variance actually tends to a very small number as n increases. This is very important, and this means that we are doing a good job in approximating the expectation. Up to now, we use the Monte Carlo method to approximate expectations of linear functions of random variables. However, the Monte Carlo method is way more general and much more applicable. Over here, we explain how to use the Monte Carlo method to approximate integrals of nonlinear functions of random variables. That is, how to approximate the expectations of nonlinear functions of random variables. For that purpose, let's consider this integral over here. Over here, g of x is a nonlinear function and f of x is the probability density function of the random variable x. This integral can actually be seen as the expectation of the random variable g of capital X, that is, i is equal to expectation g of capital X. And here it is. For the most general forms of the function g of x and f of x, it might be impossible to analytically compute this integral. Also, when the variable x is actually a random vector, it might be computationally infeasible to exactly compute the integral. And consequently, we need to use the approximation methods. Here is the Monte Carlo method for approximating this integral, and the idea is equivalent to the idea described in the previous section. The Monte Carlo method approximates this integral by performing these steps. First of all, we draw n random samples from the distribution described by the probability density function f of x, and let these samples be denoted by x1, x2, x3, until xn. 
In the second step, we approximate this integral by this average. What do we do over here? We simply take our samples and we evaluate the value of the function g at these samples. Then, we take the computed values, we add them together, and we compute the average. And that's the approximation of our integral. Simple as that. We are just averaging the values of the function g of x for x taking the values at our samples. And that's it. Again, over here, the subscript denotes the number of samples, and the hat notation denotes that this is actually an estimate. Now, it can be shown that as n goes to infinity, this approximation approaches the integral given over here, and moreover, the estimator given by this equation is actually unbiased. Let us now numerically verify this approximation. For that purpose, let us assume that the random variable x is normally distributed with a mean of 10, and the variance of sigma squared is equal to 25. Now, our idea is to try to compute the variance of our normal distribution by using the Monte Carlo method. Since we know the normal distribution, we know its variance, and we can verify the accuracy of the Monte Carlo method. So this is a test case. To compute the variance, we actually need to compute this integral. And this integral is actually expectation of x minus mu squared. And that's precisely the definition of the variance. Okay, now, how to do that? Well, the Monte Carlo method works like this. First, we will draw random samples of x, and then we need to compute an average. And in our case, our g function is actually this part, x minus mu squared. So what do we do over here? Here's the general term, xi minus mu squared. And we simply sum these terms and we compute an average. Let's perform variance estimation in Python. First of all, we need to define a normal distribution. We specify the mean value and we specify the standard deviation. The variance is equal to standard deviation squared, that is, the variance is equal to 25. And 25 will be used as a benchmark. Okay, over here, we define a normal distribution with the mean value and with the standard deviation. And let's plot our normal distribution. We compute the percentiles and the corresponding x values. Then we define the vector of x values the vector of y values that's obtained by computing the distribution, that is by evaluating the probability density function for x values, and over here we plot the probability density function. Let's see the result. Here it is. Mean is 10 and the variance is 25. Okay, the first step of the Monte Carlo method is to generate random samples. We do it over here. We specify the sample size of 10 and we generate the samples. And over here, I'm using list comprehensions to simply sum up the terms. After I do that, I simply compute the mean and I obtain my variance estimate. So let's see the result. Okay, very close, not bad, 23. Let's repeat again. Hmm, 50. Wow, it kind of increased a lot. So let's do it again. Then again, we obtain 39. So what we can see over here is that for a small number of samples, the variance is actually kind of deviates a lot, right? So it means that the variance of this estimator is large. To decrease the variance, we actually need to increase the number of samples. So let's see what happens when the number of samples is equal to 100. Okay, so let's see our variance estimate, 24.1. Okay, maybe we were lucky. So let's repeat the experiment and let's see what do we get. Hmm, 34, not bad. Let's see, for example, another sample. What do we get? For the variance 
17. Not bad. Let's now increase the number of samples to 500. And let's see the result. 25. Wow. Let's see again. 22. Hmm, we can see that the variance of our estimator actually decreased significantly. Now let's try 10,000 samples and let's see what will happen. So here we should be uh, careful since we need to define properly the sample size. Okay, so let's do it over here and let's see the result. And over here, I need to correct this part over here. And now it should be fine. So let's see our variance. Okay, it's 25 almost. 24. So we can see that the variance of this estimator tremendously decreased. And we are approaching the true variance of our normal distribution. This means that our estimator is actually working in practice. In the sequel, we will briefly explain how to use the Monte Carlo method to approximate deterministic integrals. For that purpose, let's consider this integral. Over here, g of x is an integrable function and x is a deterministic variable. Note over here that x is not any more random variable, it's completely deterministic. Now, this integral can be written like this. What did I do over here? I introduced this term, 1 over b minus a, and I need to multiply the integral by b minus a to obtain exactly my original integral. Now, let's call this part 1 over b minus a as f with the subscript u. Fu can be interpreted as the probability density function of the uniform distribution on the interval a and b. So what did we achieve over here? We transformed our original integral given by this equation into this form. And in this form, this term over here can be interpreted as a probability density function. And we can see this integral as the problem of actually approximating an expectation of the nonlinear function g of x where x is uniformly distributed on the interval from a to b. And by applying the Monte Carlo method, this approximation can be computed like this. We simply draw n samples of x from a normal distribution, then we compute this sum we compute the average and we multiply the result by b minus a. So let's test this approximation. As a test case, let's assume this cubic function g of x. And we can exactly integrate this function. And here's the result. And this result will serve as a test bed. That is, as a benchmark for our Monte Carlo approximation. Let's use Python to perform this approximation. First, we need to define a uniform distribution in Python. We do it like this. To create a uniform distribution on the interval from 1 to 3, we actually need to specify this limit that will be the end limit minus 1. So b will be 2. And here's how we define the distribution. Next, over here, by using the same principle as in our previous case, we will plot this distribution to better visualize it. Here it is. This is obviously a uniform distribution from 1 to 3. Okay, now, here's how we approximate the integral by using the Monte Carlo method. The first step is to draw random samples. Let's start with 10 random samples, and over here we compute g of x for the values of randomly drawn x, and we simply sum all the terms together, and we compute the average over here and multiply the result by b minus a. Note over here that I need to add plus 1, since 
b is defined like this. In reality, b is equal to 3. Okay, so let's see the result. Our estimate of the integral is 12. Okay, not bad. Let's repeat the experiment again. And here's our estimate, 23. Okay, let's now increase the number of samples. For example, let's use 100 samples. And let's see the re result. Here it is, 22. Not bad. The true value is actually 20. If we repeat this again and again, we will obtain a value very close to 20. Now, let's increase the number of samples. For example, 10,000. Let's see what will happen. And let's see our result. 19.96. Very good. 19.96. Excellent. And let's see what do we get. 19.899. Perfect. This means that our method is actually working. Okay, this will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video tutorial.